Hi, welcome to Good Enough Painting. Today we're working on Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Changes Constant. I backed this monster of a game on Kickstarter that came with eight different boxes. I owned the original and it was one of my favorite games to date. While I put out a feeler on IDW's Adventure Systems Facebook page and people seemed pretty receptive. So, uh, let's get to it. First color up, we're going to be painting all his skin and wog flesh from Citadel. I thinned this down with a bit of water and was planning to apply multiple coats, but I'll explain what I do in a little bit, just put one coat on for now. While waiting for the first coat to dry, we can paint the back of his shell without nicking any of his skin pretty easily. So uh, for this I use Gothor Brown. Thin your paint nicely so you don't have to obscure any of those fine details on his shell. This will be a general rule for the rest of the model so you don't have to listen to me say it anymore. But seriously, IDW stepped up their model game for this one. Significant improvement of their models compared to the last set. Now that the green has dried a bit more, we can apply the darker shade of brown on his sheets, belts, and katana grips. And I'll be using Citadel's Rhinox hide for these bits. For the front of the shell, I chose to use Talern Sand. I took special care around the areas of skin, taking my time with every brush stroke. This is pretty translucent paint, so I had to paint on multiple layers. Luckily though, if you make a mistake at this point, it's pretty easy to tidy up with the original colors, especially on the skin uh, that I'm still waiting to put an extra layer on for this exact reason. For the next color, I took out some black for Leo's guards on his katana, and also applied a good layer to the base. For all the various wraps that the turtles have, I'm gonna be painting these in a light gray and letting the wash tint those for me. With the same light gray, I also paint his eyes at this stage. Now for his mask, I'm going to be using Teculus Blue by Citadel, and especially take time around his eyes. I actually ended up nicking his left eye there, but in the next step it won't even be noticeable, luckily. I bring back a little of the light gray and water it down to where it would pool in the recess. Then I gently tap the brush into the socket so that I'd let the paint settle in there. And before going on to the next step, you're going to want to come back with our original skin tone and finally give it that extra layer for full opacity. Next to paint up all the metal details. I'm going to be using Bulk Gun Metal by Citadel. This is a pretty old paint, and according to a quick uh, Google search, the equivalent would be Lead Belcher, which I don't have. You're going to want to paint this across all the katana blades, his little belt buckle across his chest. If you're having trouble getting to the buckle, tilt your brush so that it's touching the buckle with just the side of your bristles, and lightly scoot across the surface of the buckle. And with that finished, all the base colors are done. Now onto the base. I'm gonna go for a New York in the 80s feel, like from the movies, so I'm thinking to myself, the Warriors, or the original live action movies that we grew up with, or a lot of us have grown up with. The gritty wet streets and trash scattered around in various methods. So I went first for the concrete effect, I stipple on light gray all over the base, then give it a heavy wash with null oil. Before you let that dry though, come back in with a damp brush and pull away the excess so that you can still see a little bit of that gray underneath. Now for the trash. 
I googled up some newspapers and shrunk them to scale. I didn't quite get them small enough, but I decided that if I tore them, they would still look like trash no matter what. So I just went with it and I applied some serine, I can't say the word, seraphim sepia to the paper and let that dry. All that is is just some sepia wash, uh, just Citadel's dumb name for it. I then applied some glue to it and crumpled it up in my hand like uh, you would with like paper mache. Then finally applied some white glue to where I wanted it and then stuck it down. Now it's time for the wash stage. I used a one to one mixture of black and brown and mixed the brush load of water into it to dilute it. Then I painted this all over the model, taking special care that it wouldn't pull in the eyes and making sure that it would apply a bit heavier on the wraps. With that stage done, I left the model overnight to dry. The next morning, I stippled on a little bit more gray to the brush and brought out the original flesh tone and metallic to bring back the raised areas to the true colors. I only painted his flesh tone on his shoulders and on the dome of his head. I don't imagine that the turtles are fighting in uh, daylight or under heavy light, so I don't feel the need to highlight these any further. But if you wanted to, I would mix a little bit of that white gray that we had before and subtly add that to the dome and shoulders, getting progressively smaller with your highlights as you build up. It was at this stage that I was going to call the miniature done, but the base still wasn't quite feeling good enough to me, so I brought back out the newspapers and cut out the New York Times page. I trimmed this to size and then applied a little bit of sepia wash to it. Then with super glue, I attached the page to the base, overlapping with the wad of paper that I pasted on earlier. Once dry, I pulled a little bit of the sepia wash uh, to the portion that was touching the ground, hoping that it would make the paper look like it was sitting in a puddle. With that done, I then brought out a Q-tip and painted it dark red. I cut this to about the size of his fist and then put the end of my paintbrush into it and dented it in the center. Then I painted the end silver and then streaked the little silver down the center near the dent and then super glued this to the base as well. With all of that, I can call the model officially done. How do you like it? Like I said, this game is up there with one of my favorites of all time. And with this new version, it doesn't disappoint. Thank you for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm taking suggestions on the next model of paint out of the set, so feel free to ask in the comments below. Shout out to Pete, Spencer, and Daniel for being so active in the Facebook group. We really appreciate all the work and feedback you guys put in. Hope to see you back in the next video. In the meantime, remember, you don't have to be perfect, just good enough.